Greetings to the class of 2020, to the faculty, parents, grandparents, and friends joining us today. Congratulations. It is a great honor to be with you in this most extraordinary and unusual commencement season. Now, <clears throat> grads, let's be honest. Extraordinary and unusual may not be the words that come to your mind as you think about your graduation 2020. Perhaps the words you would choose are more colorful. If so, go ahead and shout them out. You have permission from your pastor to express yourselves honestly. After all, high school grads came into the world fresh on the heels of 9-11, and now you graduate during a pandemic. You've gotten a bum rap. And it's OK to feel loss, that your commencement isn't how you imagined it would be. You've worked hard to get to this moment. You deserve to be wearing your cap and gown, to walk across the stage, to shake hands with your teachers, principals, professors, or deans, and to collect your diploma. Your families deserve to bear witness to this moment, to know that all of their years of hard work and sacrifice were worth it. Giving up this rite of passage is hard. And since it happens to come at a time when so many others are going through so much worse, I wonder if some of you might be feeling a bit guilty about being sad. You might be thinking, of all of the lives that have been lost to the COVID-19 pandemic, or of the millions of people who are out of work. You might think you really shouldn't feel sad about losing out on a graduation ceremony. Well, it's good you're paying attention to all of the people who are hurting right now, but that shouldn't mean that your pain doesn't count. Commencement addresses are full of advice for life, so let me start with just a little bit of advice that I heard on a podcast, Hidden Brain. The host, Sean Carvedantam, says, suffering is not a zero-sum game. Your pain doesn't go away just because somebody else's pain is greater. Your pain always counts. Remember that. If you graduated or received a degree, I hope you feel some relief. Papers are written, projects are finished, tests are over, and it all must have gone OK because you're on the other side of it now. You're done. Your education is complete, right? Well, if you think your education is over, here's another bit of commencement address of wisdom. It's predictable and worthwhile. Your education is never complete. If you choose to live an examined life, your learning will never end. And since I'm your pastor and not your professor, I'll focus on your spiritual learning. As a human being, you have an obligation not to fritter your life away, but to address things that matter to you. You know what they are. They come from deep inside of you. It is up to you to develop a mature spirituality. By that, I mean a spirituality that allows you to grow, to go ever deeper into life. A mature spirituality is one in which life's ultimate mysteries, who we are, why we're here, what this journey is about, what happens when we die, a mature spirituality doesn't answer those questions. Rather, it allows all of those mysteries to be honored and preserved. Any spiritual paradigm, any philosophy or religion or psychology or theology in which everything is just wrapped up in a neat little package results in keeping your thinking small. Don't buy it. You are summoned to grow into yourself fully, to grow up, 
to become an individual who essentially says, I have to be accountable here, in a sense, not simply settle for received answers. There is no shortage of answers offered to you. But as you deepen your mature spirituality by considering new ideas or experiences or ways of thinking, you have to ask yourself, does this make sense with my experience? Does this fit with my journey? If it doesn't, let it go. It's somebody else's path, not yours. Another thing about a mature spirituality, I hate to tell you this, but it will not save you from the travails of life. As the saying goes, life is hard, then you die and they throw dirt in your face. What, you're expecting an uplifting commencement address? I'm joking. And the thunder just clapped here quite loudly. <laughs> I'm joking. But I'm also reminding you of something that you already know. There's no getting around pain and struggle in any life. You will have your share. Some people get more than their share. A mature spirituality, however, will sustain you. It will help you make sense of things. One last bit of advice. Choose a spiritual path that will keep your questions alive. It is the nature of your questions that leads to an interesting journey. We all receive answers from our culture, from our families, our religious traditions. And for many people, that's it. They just sort of shut down. For what it's worth, I think that's where you have to start. Let your questions guide you. If you're someone who has been in this church for long, you've heard this way of thinking a lot. Yes, yes, we need to live the questions, honor the questions, let our questions guide us. You may be getting sort of tired of the questions, and particularly in this time of uncertainty, say, you know, it would be nice to find some answers. Well, here's what I have to say about that. Good luck with that. Give it a try. Just know that whatever answers you find today, there's a good chance that by tomorrow, or five or ten years from now, there's a good chance they will no longer suit you. And when that happens, will you hang on to them? A lot of people do that. They stay stuck, just holding on to the husk of something when the energy has long left it. All answers are provisional. They work until they stop working. And then you find yourself in an in-between time. That's the nature of journey. That's the nature of life. Life is constantly flowing forward. And maybe God, if you risk believing in God, maybe God is always flowing forward too. A mature spirituality will support you as you flow with it. Sometimes we leave behind places where we once felt comfortable. Some touchstones remain with us for a lifetime because they fit. So there's nothing wrong with answers we have as long as they continue to inform us in ways that are authentic for us. The river keeps flowing. We need to keep growing and developing as we go. Jungian analyst James Hollis says, today's certainty becomes tomorrow's constriction. Some don't like that. They resist that way of thinking. Some people embrace it. What will you do? My prayer for you, graduates, for everyone listening, my prayer for all of us is that we find a way to flow into the changes and challenges and chances of our lives, that we rest in the river and trust where it takes us. Amen.
Thank you to all who have participated in worship today. A special thank you to Heather Goolsby for your leadership and your ministry here is changing lives, and we honor you and thank you for that. Um, coming up this week, just a reminder, uh, Racist Anonymous will be on Wednesday afternoon at 2. I uh, hope as many people as possible can join. We got off to a wonderful start last week. And we do not have Adventure Village or Youth today after church as we usually would because it's Father's Day. Also, next Sunday, um, we're going to try something a little bit different. Sometimes in worship, when we're together, uh, I ask people to submit questions, to which I draw one and impromptu respond to it. It's not an answer. It's just what I'm thinking or have to say about it at, any, at that particular moment. So that will, that's what we'll do next week. We'll honor the questions inside us and, <clears throat> and have a chance for you to voice them to the community and hear a little bit of what I might have to say about that. So friends, go forth into this week with boundless love and compassion in your hearts, embracing the peace that is always available despite any circumstance. In the name of our God, who is our creator and our redeemer and our sustainer, go blessed. Amen. <laughs>